In an exclusive interview, the chief of Air Force Intelligence tells CNN airstrike targeting against ISIS gets a failing grade. On a scale of 1 to 10, how far behind is targeting? I would give us a 5, which means we have a lot of work to do. The problem? The problem is not having enough fighter jets to drop bombs. The problem is having enough legitimate targets that we can strike that can put ISIL on their heels. The Pentagon has been trying to find better ways to select ISIS targets that, if bombed, really would hurt the organization. But the general describes a disjointed process. We are tracking targets off of uh, probably a couple dozen spreadsheets, and uh, it's not coordinated uh, between all of the agencies. A startling assessment after 13,000 airstrikes there's always room to improve. The airstrikes are helping take back territory. On this section of the Syria-Turkey border, the U.S. is focusing on shutting down the flow of fighters back and forth, conducting airstrikes around this key area of Manbij in northern Syria. The sophisticated attacks like Paris and Brussels planned in Raqqa, they go up through this Manbij pocket area, they coordinate and organize in Manbij city, and then move out through Turkey to conduct their attacks. And airstrikes can disrupt ISIS finances. One example, half of ISIS's $300 million a year in oil earnings has been wiped out by airstrikes, but still leaving them $150 million a year. That's a lot of money and can fund a lot of things across the globe. Including the attack in Istanbul. ISIS is building a network of dozens of terrorists it can still send into Europe, officials tell CNN. ISIL is training and attempting to deploy operatives for further attacks. ISIL has a large cadre of Western fighters who could potentially serve as operatives for attacks in the West.